everyone, and welcome to our GBTA post-show recap webinar. My name is Peter Sebio. I am in the marketing department of Grasp Technology, and I thank you all for being here. Before we get started, we have a few housekeeping things to get through. Uh, firstly, we're going to be trying out a little bit of a different format. We're going to be doing a sort of a town hall style. Uh, so if you guys feel like chiming in with your, you know, feelings from the, from the GBTA show, uh, uh, what you notice and, and everything, feel free to click the raise hand button uh, in GoToWebinar and thank you guys whenever we open it up to the, uh, uh, open it up to the floor. A few ground rules, please, you know, let's keep things nice. Uh, this is just a, we're going to try to keep it really light, really friendly, really fun. And uh, so, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, first, we have Mike Duffy, if you want to introduce yourself. Good to be here. I'm head of product grasp. I've uh, been in travel tech for roughly 20 years. Um, always found uh, GBTA conventions, you know, a little uh, overwhelming and, you know, each with their own nuances and strengths. And I'm, you know, curious to get everyone's take on, on, on the events. So I'll pass it over to Justin. Hi hey everybody, Justin Morris. I'm regional director of sales for Traxo. Um, I wear a couple of hats. So, with, from a GBTA perspective, I'm the VP of Education for the Wisconsin chapter. Um, so, this was actually really cool for me to attend convention from uh, an education content perspective uh, because there were so many sessions, and we'll be walking through that today. Also, I'm trying to put on um, this discussion from the lens of I wasn't at convention. What were some of the highlights? What were some of the things that that I missed or might want to pay attention to if I have access to the recordings? And so that's our goal and our heart behind this. And you know, to just reiterate uh, Peter's point, all of you are welcome to chime in. So all you need to do is just raise your hand, and we'll unmute you uh, anytime you want to comment. It's not going to be let's wait and hold the questions to the end. It's going to be all throughout. So please, if you have a comment, you want to lend. Uh, you know, your experience, your feedback, this is time for you to share your voice and to share with others what you thought stood out as well. And I'll pass it over to Ash. Super excited to have everybody here. Thank you for joining. Um, and like Justin said, and what Mike said, our goal is just to give you all as much content um, as possible that we were able to be a part of. Uh, but for sure, we wanna make sure that you at least feel like you were there. Um, the goal here is that if you have any FOMO, this is your FOMO prescription session. So. Um, hopefully you enjoy that a little bit as well. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you guys. And uh, so, Ash, if you want to take this away, let's have some fun. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So what we decided to do was we wanted to make sure that you all kind of, uh, you know, we wanted to take you through the experience of the actual uh, GBTA um, convention. So we're going to pull up the agenda uh, and we're just going to go through um, different sessions, different topics that we all, you know, went to and attended. Uh, that way you all get a nice feel for uh, what the actual sessions were like. And almost like as if you were attending the session, you're going to be able to attend four days worth of content in 45 minutes. That's the goal, right, guys? Yeah, no pressure or That's anything. Right. So I will say right away, I did not attend the 5K run and walk because... I saw the letter, the number five and K next to it. I said, hell no. And then I saw the time and I said, hell no. So that was off the table for me immediately. Um, but I know, Justin, you went to Win It Summit. So um, Sunday night, uh, sorry, Sunday during the day, you were at the Win It Summit. Tell us a little bit about what was going on there and what did you see and um, how do people understand what happened? Yeah, I really like, I think my biggest takeaway from the Win It Summit, uh, so they had Anise Cavanaugh. She did a uh, she released a book called Contagious Culture, and this was a speech on her follow-up book called Contagious You, and it's all about how you show up. So she was talking about showing up with intention and the energy that you bring and how present you are. She actually calls it the IEP. Um, very brilliant, uh, very applicable to our industry, and especially you know from the concept of women in leadership, which I fully support. Um, and I showed up there to, to basically bring my support by listening and uh, you know, they talked about uh, allyship, they talk about, um, they gave testimonies, a lot of people gave their experience uh, of how they have come up through Win It. Um, it's an incredibly powerful organization, brings a lot of weight. And um, I don't know if anybody, uh, again, this is a, a good opportunity for you guys in the, uh, that are attending. If anybody wants to share any of their experiences, if you were there with me uh, at the Win It Summit. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought it went really well. 
what was your, I mean, if you had to say, you know, what was your key takeaway? What would you say from that summit? Like, what was the message? I think that, um, hmm, I, you know, I would probably sum it up with, uh, don't be afraid to speak up. Yeah, awesome. uh, because you actually have a voice. Everyone has a voice and it's not just, uh, it feels kind of odd for me to be the, you know, the white male saying this, but it's true. I mean, you, you have a voice and it, we are very inclusive in our industry and very supportive of, um, you know, women in leadership, which is, you know, the heart behind women overall. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I think I, yeah. I think that was, the the I got the feel that the the summit at least from uh, GBTA convention was around empowering those that had not yet stepped up and also um, I, I caught a lot of the mentee mentorship you know so some people are at the stage of being a mentee some are at the stage of being a mentor right. and yep. don't be afraid don't be afraid to get involved don't be afraid to to make a difference and step up to have someone pour into you and invest in you as well. I mean, this is just my feeling uh, that I felt there was a lot of young people in our industry. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed that at all, but I, I noticed that at the, at the um, convention overall. And I think this is a great opportunity for all of us who are veterans in the industry to just kind of take somebody under your wing. It doesn't have to be part of any big splash of any kind, you know, just do it as, as, as a person in the industry. And I think that if we do all that collectively, um, we will not only allow for the future of the industry to happen, but also um, share knowledge and, and share great insights. Yeah. So awesome, good feedback. Yeah. All right, so um, let's, go, let's get to the party. I mean, you know, kickoff, welcome, reception kicked off. And, uh, you know, my, my feeling was that, you know, it, it just felt so good. I mean, it was outside in the pavilion by the hotel. There was the marina right there. Um, it was all outdoorsy, um, but it was um, packed. Uh, and I, you know, it was the first like gathering at GBTA. Um, you know, we had the convention last year uh, that was lightly attended, but this time it was just, it just felt great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was standing, I mean, we were crowded yeah. and it was awesome. And you can see people that, you, you could tell there were people that were seeing people that they hadn't seen in like a year, two years, three years. And it, it was like, it was like this big gigantic family reunion. Um, you know, we were, yeah. we're back. We're finally back. We got this COVID crap behind us, and it felt just like convention before. You know, um, it, it's like so. It was a research, and you feel the energy just walking through the crowd and and seeing. I mean, there it was just wall to wall, if you can imagine, people everywhere, and it was freaking phenomenal. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, and I think it was good consistency. You know, there was good flow through the whole um, the whole period of time. In fact, even just before uh, I was walking uh, towards, uh, you know, that the, the kickoff and I uh, ran into a number of people. I mean, just that whole that whole few days, I, I kept running into people I, I knew and haven't seen in a few years. And I'm sure everyone was sort of experiencing that. It was so good to reconnect. Um, and then also some new faces, like Osh, you were saying some new blood coming into the industry, which is great to see kind of new, you know, revitalizing the industry, um, mm -hmm. you know, all of it, all this super, super positive stuff. Yeah, and we need young people in our industry for sure. So that was a great look. Go ahead, Justin. I was just going to say, we did put, um, I, you know, there were so many parties, just that, that was another thing. So Orlando last year, um, I think it was a little tough because uh, no one really wanted to throw official parties because we were still kind of at the end of the pandemic. Um, that was not the case this year. There were uh, a lot of nighttime events to choose from and go to. And it was, it, like I said, it was just like it was before. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank those that came to our um, reception that we hosted, you know, Tracks on Grasp together. Um, I know uh, probably a, a good handful of people that are here today were uh, you know, invited, that attended. And, you know, so we thank you for that. If you guys have any feedback of, you know, what you'd like to see if we do this, you know, next year because we're all planning on it uh, just let us know um you know so it's going to be in dallas and uh look i have a request can you can you have a celebrity there i'd like a celebrity at our part at the party that's a, well, that, that's a request gosh, you're going to be there aren't you oh come on Can you sign autographs hey so quick question i know we didn't rehearse this stuff so you know none of this is rehearsed by the way uh but wanted to just ask you guys a question did you meet anybody that you didn't recognize because there was a lot of people that i was like i looked at them they looked at me we kind of felt like we knew each other, but it's been so long that we haven't seen each other. Some people grew beards, some people changed their hair colors, all sorts of weird stuff was going on. Anything stand out to you from that? 
Oh wow! Yeah, I, well, yeah, I might might leave that one alone because uh, you know I've aged a few years uh, since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. So, uh, but yeah, there there was some. But it was a lot of actually. You, you recognize uh, the the smiles and the eyes, uh, you know, and you, you see the energy uh, and, yeah. and the people. And so that that doesn't change over time. I I did see a lot of people that. So um, for those of you that don't know. A little bit of my journey. I I attend a lot of ETA chapters um, on the local level, and um, so I saw a ton of people. And I did have a couple where I'm like, hey, and I was couldn't place it in my <laughs> head, but uh, um, and they were so kind, and everybody is just so nice and and kind. So if if I if it showed that I didn't immediately recognize them, they didn't let it show to me that they knew that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's uh, there's just so many people. There's I think 5,000 that showed up. Yeah, uh, actually yeah. the 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 official numbers just um anybody's curious about the numbers, this is the official numbers that was released. Um 4,626 industry peers from 50 countries, 1,020 buyers representing 550 companies. So, and over by the way, this is really important, 1,000 first timers. So 25% wow. of the people were 1,000 uh, were first timers. So that tells you there's yeah. a lot of new blood, right? 25% of the people there were new blood, or at yeah. least you know they've been yeah. they never went before. So that's, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, good numbers. Um, so uh, all right, so let's move on uh, to uh, to Monday, shall we? You know, Monday, that's when the education kicks off. Uh, you know, we had a lot of different things going on in the morning uh, for the main stage. Uh, and then we had some educational sessions. There were a few that we're going to kind of pick on. Um, but again, uh, if anybody has feedback on any other sessions, please feel free to. Um, and so the, one of the sessions I know, Justin, you attended is the to policy or not to policy session. Um, give us some feedback on that. Yeah, uh, so this was led by Tony DeSalpo and, um, you know, bless his heart, he had a couple of panelists that had to um, be shuffled in last second. And I think they did a fantastic job. So we had uh, uh, Terry Moreno and um, I believe it was Debbie McKay and uh, Yvonne Herrera were up there. If, I'm, if my memory serves right, but I don't know if any of you are on, if you want to correct me, please feel free. Um, but it was, it, you know, the, there were a lot of poll questions that I thought were had some interesting responses around, you know, did your policy, did you create a policy, you know, as a result of the pandemic where you didn't have one before? Um, is it stricter? Or is it less strict? Is it the same? How often do you review your, your policy? Um, you know, so it really was a, a deep dive and an overall view of policy. And, and, and you know, so they, they kind of dug in and gave their feedback and, the panelists I thought was interesting because they had different perspectives because their programs run differently. And, uh, you know, so I thought that was interesting as well. Um, we do have a, yeah. a question coming in already, I think, uh, on the chat. Um, I, yeah. don't know if, uh, I don't know the answer to it. If you guys may know, it though, uh, how many exhibitors? Do you know the, not that number? Hmm. Um, so, Leslie, uh, Fritz, thank you for joining. Appreciate your question. Um, I do not have that information, unfortunately, but I will tell you from what I saw with my eyes, um, the room was uh, was packed. Um, everybody came in with their big gun ex um, you know exhibits, um, and there were tons of uh, large um, exhibitors, uh, small exhibitors, medium sized exhibitors. Uh, so from a exhibition a hall perspective, it felt um, you know almost 2019. I would say. What do you guys think? Agree? Disagree? Yeah, I, I mean. I yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like feel like uh, every, everything was back, you know, every yeah. business was back, and it may have been just different brands that were uh, highlighted, you know, you know, and it's kind of cyclical, you know, some years it's a certain brand, and you know they yeah. do it again in three or four years. So, yeah, so it, it seems like there was good, good presence, good energy. All right, so back to the education session. Um, so uh, the uh, so uh, the question is to policy or not to policy, Justin? What was the answer? I don't think that there was a there was a final answer. I think there were percentage scales on um, the level of strictness, um, but I don't know if there was a definite a definitive answer to that question once it was done. I don't recall there being one. Um, I don't think Shakespeare answered that question either, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So we have a question here regarding policies. Is pre-trip approval still a thing? 
And that's another one where I don't remember hearing any specific mention to pre-trip approvals other outside of their policy is just more strict. Hmm. So what that means could be relative. Um, okay. so I, I don't recall any mentions of uh, pre-trip approvals specifically. Yeah. And that. All right. So let's talk about another session that I attended personally, which was the omni-channel navigating industry um, post uh, post COVID. So uh, this was um, a really good session moderated uh, by Greeley. Um, um, I call him Greeley Koch because of uh, the mayor Ed Koch in New York, but um, I think it's Cook Greeley Cook. Um, so uh, he uh, did a fantastic job of uh, that session and moderated really well. He actually did the Oprah Winfrey thing. He actually got into the audience and he was like not on the stage. He was doing it from the ground, which I thought was really nice. I wanted to mimic that, but I wasn't able to pull that off in mind. But um, he did a fantastic job, and the content there was about, you know, should we think differently? Should we, you know, oh, think about just, pol you know, pushing everybody through um, a single channel, um, which is uh, the opposite of omni-channel, right, uh, where there's multiple channels. Uh, and, you know, you had uh, a, a couple of buyers up on stage um, uh, from Salesforce, and Stanford was there. Um, shout out to both of them. And uh, there was also um, a couple of opinions from Carolyn uh, from a consultant perspective. Um, and um, ARC was also on stage. So that was a really nice one. And really, it was about talking about options and choices and what, what is out there. So um, the consensus was that, you you know, depending on your company um, mindset and, of course, changing the ability for people to uh, to ask, um, uh, you know, to to actually go in, uh, in in that situation in the right way, you were able to then make a decision about whether you want to open up multiple channels. And I think Janet from Stanford, um, travel manager at Stanford, said this well. She said that, you know, it's almost impossible to not have omni-channel even today. Like people are doing bookings directly and other things like that too. So you already have it. It's just a matter of do you want to accept it and do you want to then do something about it. So. Um, any any thoughts around that from you guys on that on that session? Well, I mean, I I'm not biased, but I, I mean, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was, we're, we're, we're I a little was, biased. I, I wasn't in that particular session, but I was in an omni-channel session on the Tuesday, which I can talk about when we hit Tuesday. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's sort of a similar themes, but just uh, with a different angle. Yeah. So uh, uh, we uh, at Traxo uh, put together a session called uh, Post-Pandemic Predictions, uh, Trends in Travel Procurement. And uh, that, was a, uh, that was a session that I moderated. I uh, had a wonderful group of panelists um, uh, that were part of it. Uh, Suzanne, uh, who was part of it as well, uh, really filled in um, last minute uh, for Scott. Uh, uh, Scott was not able to attend. Um, so we had filled uh, filled it in, and then we had uh, Bruce. Yep, uh, we had Bruce um, from BTP, uh, and um, also Stephen um, from uh, Baker McKenzie. So we had a great, uh, uh, you know, two buyers, consultant, as well as um, a technologist. Uh, so that was a really good one. Uh, and um, what do you? What was your takeaway, Justin, from that? I mean, I was a little biased because I was moderating. So yeah. Well, first off, I'm, we're very proud of you, Ash. Um, I mean, just to, to see the interest, the level of interest when everybody came in. I mean, this was one of those sessions where they weren't letting anybody in. They decided to go ahead and open it back up. And there were so many people standing along the wall that it was beyond standing room only. Like people were sitting on the floor just to be able to come in and, and hear it. So you did something right. Um, and so kudos to you for that. I think, so I actually, uh, being the education person, I have this, um, you know, for, for Wisconsin chapter, I have this networking group that I've uh, kind of collaborated with uh, other education chairs. And we did kind of a session like this where we talked together. And one of the pieces of feedback that I got was that um, some of the other education chairs were a little disappointed that some of the panelists were keeping some of their responses a little generic and not getting specific. And that did not happen session and so they were they were not afraid to call out which suppliers they were working with specifically or which direction they wanted to head even if it was um you know maybe not the kindest to certain suppliers or supplier segments or i mean it, so i love the i think the reason why people like that session is because they were real you know they were they were like this is how we see it we're not afraid to say it might not be the same as you but this is how we see it and this is how we're doing our program um, so that was, I think my biggest takeaway was that 
it was genuine. It was it was yeah. real. It was genuine. It was not you know an attempt to be political or generic in any way. And yeah. that that was good. Yeah, that was uh, that was actually um, uh, kind of what we intended uh, to have happened. So it worked out really well. Uh, all right, so let's shift over here to um, the some of the um, uh, main things that happened. This is where we're moving to, into the main stage. Um, we had a wonderful uh, lunch, um, and then we, of course, had some of the state of the industry from Suzanne, uh, CEO of GBTA Talk. Um, she provided with some great information. My biggest takeaway from that was that the data that she presented showed uh, that travel was not going to get back to pre-pandemic levels from a business travel perspective until she was saying mid-2026. That was based on the GBTA study. Um, and you can see that study on the GBTA website if you're interested in getting more information. Uh, and the reason for that, uh, for that delay was simply that the uh, you know the the macroeconomics um, of the, the climate today that we have with the recession looming and all sorts of different things like that, um, supply chain issues, and we talk, covered some of this in the post-pandemic predictions actually, uh, that those were the reasons why these things were going to be delayed. So, um, uh, you know, that was a, that was an interesting um, awakening, uh, but it doesn't mean that those things are going to stay that way forever. It could also uh, be changed, um, you know. Uh, if the climate changes uh, economically, then of course the predictions um, and the study, of course, will change as well. All right. Um, so uh, then we had Cynthia Marshall, CEO of Dallas Mavericks. Um, Justin, I know you were on stage dancing. Um, so <laughs> tell us about that experience. You were on the main stage dancing in the middle of the of the room. Um, by the way, I really like the way the room was set up this year. Did you guys yeah, see that? Yeah. That was a circular effect. Mm -hmm. that had a circular stage, um, and the speakers were like moving around in different directions, and people were sitting all around. So that was really cool. Um, I thought that was nice. That was different. Um, so tell us about your 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 stage experience, Justin. Well, I am neither going to confirm nor deny. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, she was really awesome a really great speaker um the thing that i liked about her was that she took everyone's guard down by addressing distractions and saying you know what if you want to talk amongst yourselves go ahead in, in fact i used to come from at and i was a leader there so if you want to make a phone call go ahead and and it kind of disarmed this stigma around the distractions and everyone was engaged i mean i'm, I'm that's Part of my habit when I go to speeches, because now I'm sitting in the content chair for my chapter, is I look around the audience to see how engaged are they. And people were just glued to her. And when she invited people up to the stage to dance, um, it was just another one of those where everybody is like, okay, like we don't need to take ourselves so serious. Let's have a little fun. And obviously she brings results because she she spoke to the uh, to the results of the Mavericks and and you know the 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 results before she came on board and after were stellar um you know so it was a great message about um being all in you know just uh, yeah i'm not gonna you know kind of halfway do things I'm, I'm gonna be all in and it was yeah. great it was it was a great great speech i like the fact that when here's uh, my eye was over yeah I'm, I'm not kidding i really did it was really good yeah, yeah. no i thought it was great um so I, I I was uh, I was taken back. It was kind of uh, you know I mean she of course uh, talked about um, uh, you know DEI and she uh, you know she's the chief diversity officer. Oh she was I'm sorry at the uh, at AT and T and then she was hired to come on as the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. And I like the fact that she said that you know when Mark Cuban called her she didn't even know who Mark Cuban was. So that was hilarious. And she said the yeah. reason why she didn't know was because she doesn't have time to watch TV. That's funny. She said she thought it was her son calling to ask for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was fun. She's she's one high energy person. Let me tell you. I mean, she had the crowd dancing on the not only on the dance floor but also in the audience, right? And people were getting up and really responding to her very well. So if anybody's looking for a amazing speaker for your next company outing, um, I don't know how much it costs, but that would be a good one to have. All right. Um, now I want to move to the fireside chat real quick, and we'll talk about that just real briefly before we move on to Tuesday. Um, the fireside chat, this was really nice. This was um, with Dara, um, CEO of Uber. And for those of you who know Dara, Dara actually was with Expedia before he came on to Uber. And so he talked about how, um, how, how he's changed Uber. Of course, Uber went through a really, uh, you know, a change makeover. Um, 
from their previous CEO. So Dara kind of had to clean up all of that stuff. But he focused his uh, comments on the fact that Uber Eats was the highest performing aspect of Uber. And, um, and during the pandemic, of course, that was a big deal. But now he's seeing how Uber and Uber Eats um, it kind of are converging. So the, the drivers who were drivers during, uh, you know, for Uber then became drivers for Uber Eats. Um, and the passengers that were sitting in Uber cars pre-pandemic became consumers of Uber Eats. Um, and now he's seeing the shift, you know, kind of going back in the travel direction where you have drive, you know, Uber Eats drivers moving to Uber. So this platform that has the ability to converge people in different directions based on your needs and maybe ideally consume all of it at the same time um, was was a big factor in Uber's success over the last couple of quarters. Um, uh, so that to me was a big deal. And I thought that was amazing. Yeah, the only thing I might add is just some some of my own personal observations um, during convention, specifically around Uber. They're they're showing up, they're paying attention to the business side, mm-hmm. and I think that um, you know, for a company like Uber, they don't necessarily they may not necessarily have to because they get a lot of volume from consumer. Um, but the fact that they're paying attention, they're creating partnerships. I know they they've got an official uh, partnership in place with uh, Deem and and their Eta platform and the fact that they they brought like I don't know at, I saw at least 50 60 Uber for business reps there at convention I just kudos to them for for paying attention to our segment to corporate travel yeah yeah and um, one of the things that he also talked about uh, which everybody should be really aware of it is that Uber is moving into the travel space so you know if you're in UK for example you have access to Uber uh, travel. Um, that, that's not an official term. I think I just made that up. But they have. Uh, you can book flights. You can book hotels. And you got to remember that Dara comes from Expedia, right? So sooner or later, he's going to start thinking, "Hey, I have all these cars. Um, they're going to an airport or they're going to a hotel. Uh, hmm. Uh, let me do the math." Uh, so you know, I think Uber is going to be a big disruptor um, on the air and hotel side. All right, so let's go to Tuesday. Um, Tuesday was um, the last full day of the conference. A lot of content, a lot of, um, you know, stuff happening. This was like the the busiest day, I think, um, from just a buzz perspective, um, simply because uh, it was the last full day. Uh, So I know that, Mike, you attended um, the session called Day in the Life of a Virtual Card. Yeah. What is uh, what was your feeling about that session? What did you get away with it? And I know that Grasp has done some great work on virtual card with Marriott, and you guys have created a great interface. So I know you'll talk a little bit about that as well. So let's hear. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was a, a really interesting session. Um, you know, obviously we you know, Grasp does have a, a strong background in that, and um, and there were some really candid comments from from the audience. Uh, like one of the opening comments, uh, and I, I, I can't recall who, who said it, but uh, you know they said when a virtual card works, it works great, and you know the times it doesn't, it's it's terrible, it's a disaster. So I mean, uh, kind of you know re- really appreciate that, uh, you know that they're you know wanting to sort of solve for problems, and you know as the conversation sort of progressed, you know there is certainly a, an appreciation of, of the virtual payments because you know a lot of there's a lot of folks there using them. Um, but then there was also awareness that there is some friction with some workflows. Uh, so, and I think, you know, from what I was hearing, uh, you know, from all the conversations uh, in that session is that, you know, the you know, providers and hotels are, they are closing the gap and addressing those anomalies, but there's still, still some little hiccups here and there um, that, that are still being solved as, as we speak. And so it was uh, really great to hear the feedback. It's really good to see, you know, People seeing, you know, the, the potential and, and what is happening there and with virtual cards, and that's sort of, a, you know, it's a, it is a payment for the future. So it was uh, really well done, really well organized, and uh, again, I just love the the candid comments uh, from the audience. It was fantastic, and right from the beginning, they weren't shy. Was that an early morning session, by the way? I can't remember. Or was that eight? That one was, I think, at noon. I think it was twelve yeah. fifteen. Yeah. Yep. Twelve fifteen. Yep. All right. Um, great. So that was good feedback. Um, and then, Justin, I know you ended the uh, attended the NFTs one. What is yes, what is NFT yeah. by the way? What uh, is NFT? 
it is a non-fungible token. And I can actually answer that now. So um, this was the NFT session was was by Hansini Sharma, which I am not endorsed or a spokesperson for, but I just absolutely love her style and the way she presents because she is does. She paying you, is she paying you, by the way, for this? Not, that's what I'm saying. I'm not endorsed on this, but um, but yeah, so it was kind of funny because she did one of those uh, like TikTok videos where she was interviewing people with this teeny tiny microphone of what do you think an NFT is? And I was one of those, you know, um, uh, doofuses that was out there trying to guess what it was because I didn't know. Um, and she really, she spent probably a good portion of the session just educating and did a phenomenal job of what an NFT is, what different types you can have, the ways to get it, the difference between uh, cryptocurrency versus blockchain versus, I mean, there's a lot involved in it, but then she also honed it in on, okay, so what does this have to do with corporate travel? Um, and she brought it through to the future of uh, corporate travel as, as it relates to payments and uh, currency and the different ways to be able to provide that. It's, it seems like at least today that the, what I gathered in uh, Hansini's conversation is that it is uh, primarily more of a leisure product with regards to travel today, um, but definitely the door is open. And so I think for the forward thinking organizations uh, and companies, um, it would be good for you to educate yourself on an NFT and the potential use case, especially from the suppliers out there. It's a, it's a very new creative way to be able to get your product or service out there. Um, it's, it's right now it's kind of this mystery thing, I think for most people, but Hansini definitely cleared it up. And if you're at all curious, I would highly recommend listening to the recording of that. I thought she did a phenomenal job. She always does. Awesome. So do you have a non fungible token or trial? I what actually is? do. I actually have one now and it was an NFT drop from Hansini. Uh, oh. so yeah, I should have pulled it up, but maybe, maybe what you guys are talking, I'll see if I can pull it up and show it to everybody. But, uh, cause they come through as little cartoon graphics. Um, yeah. I think there's almost like a virtual baseball card. Does that sound yeah. about right? Yeah. So you get a, you get a digital wallet. Um, yeah. you know, you could set that up. I think mine was Coinbase. Um, but there are lots of options out there and, um, she, she did, she, she did a drop for everybody that was in, in attendance, um, for the session. And so. Nobody else is going to be able to have that because you weren't there. So I, I've, oh. I've got limited edition Hansini. So, Charmant, so can you whatever. transfer? Can you transfer an NFT to somebody else? You absolutely can. Yeah. Oh, so send send me the one you have. That way I'll have it. I think I'm going to hang on to it for a while. We'll oh, see. Let me think about what it. What is the value of the Hansini NFT? Is there value? The value could be created. You know. So I I I mean, as of right now, I mean, the assumed value is is probably my pride and knowing that I'm one of the only ones that has it, but you know, you never know. Kind of you like a baseball know. card. I have some it's baseball really cards that I feel pretty value. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Uh, you want to learn about NFTs and you want to get to know it. Um, the future of travel is related to it um, in some way or form. And I'm sure we will find a whole bunch out as we move forward. So the other session that I heard a lot about uh, was the OBT death match. Uh, which really was a bunch of OBT people up on stage. Um, Spot Nana was there, I think. Concur was there. No, I think I know Spot Nana was there. Concur was there. Circle was there. Uh, and who else was there? Well, I know one? It, one thing I was a little confused by when I heard the feedback when we had this call when the education people got together is that Dean was not there. So I was curious about that. Um, but I was not able to attend and I'm really hoping someone in the audience will raise their hand and speak up on this because I heard it was amazing. Like there were some punches thrown, like they got really down and dirty in this. And again, I, it, the, the overall feedback that I'm hearing is that, you know, the, the most attended sessions, the most interest was, were in the sessions where people were getting real, you know, they were, they were just out there and, and being forthright. And I don't know. I mean, I, I just heard that there were some digs made from, you know, one OBT to another OBT. And I don't know if it was all in fun or if they were like, you know, gloves off, throwing down. I, but I, I'm really, really hoping that someone on this call will raise their hand and speak up and say, I was in, in that and here's what I saw. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't see anybody yet, but I'm hoping you guys will raise your hand because I really want to hear about this one. And I'll I'll go I, heard similar, I heard similar feedback. I heard this one was pretty intense. Um, and I mean, just with the title, it's, it's very uh, interesting. A death match, you know. Uh, let's ready. Let's ready to rumble. Um, and so I think the 
the participants uh, kind of uh, took that to heart uh, from what I heard, and that sounded like it was a really, really uh, interesting and lively discussion. Yeah, yeah. Had right. Rudy Fernandez with his hand raised. Yes. Who, who's got the hand raised? Did you say somebody has the hand raised? Uh, yes, Bertie Fernandez. We are unmuting him now. Very nice. Welcome, Bernie. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, hear you. Uh, thank you so much um, to Traxo and Grass for putting up this session. Really great uh, overview. But um, yeah, I did attend the death match, and it was uh, there was a lineup to enter that session. That session was absolutely full. Um, but it was great to see all the different OBTs and what they could bring to the stage. I mean, they were really at each other, let's put it that way. Um, but uh, it was good to see different different perspective of, there was FCF, that was the fourth one that was there. So from a travel management company side, what they are doing on the technology front and how are they doing it within for their own, like their own kind of OBT tool. Um, I, I like, I mean, Spot Nana was, uh, was there. Um, I always like Johnny, he's really good. Uh, and he was saying that they're trying to get rid of the PNR concept, which was kind of okay. Uh, how how that's going to you know imp uh, come into play? So really was good to see that aspect because they are like, okay, don't say the word PNR because it's not going to be a PNR. There's going to be just you know one booking source where everybody is able to you know kind of you, you're able to get it. So I'm, I'm, I would like to see what that kind of looks like. But uh, yeah, I mean you know uh, Tony like him. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, he had a couple of things what Sorok was doing on the uh, OBT side, um, and of course, Concur being the biggest player in, not, in especially in North America, um, they they were there as well, and they were providing the input of what's happening, especially uh, not only in the US space but also in the Canadian space. Me coming from Canada, so yeah, that was uh, yeah. They were at each other. I thought they were going to probably punch one another at the end of the at the session, <laughs> but uh, you know, I think they did a good job. That was so it was, a, it was a death match, Bertie. So, <laughs> yeah, who won? Was, there a, who was won? there a survivor, or did they all die? I mean, how, uh, <laughs> they all survived. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so no death in the death match. Okay. No, all right. Really. I was just yeah. curious. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thank so, you. so, Bertie, um, Bertie, who would you say, um, from your, you know, from what you saw, from you know, with your own eyes and and your understanding of that session, um, which one resonated the most with you? Which OBT? I mean, all of them have, have a good space. I mean, they have a good uh, thing in the industry, but uh, they all bring different things to the to the to each uh, different corporation. So it's up to the corporation what they want to finally, mm -hmm. you know, go with. So what is their end goal and what they want to do, right? So yeah. um, it all depends upon each company, each individual organization, and what their path is within their, you know, either travel or travel and expense solutions. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for, for coming up on stage and sharing your comment. All right, so somebody had a question. Let me answer this question. Uh, somebody talked about, uh, you know, were there job openings? Um, you know, uh, and of course, that's a really important topic uh, in our industry these days. And so I don't, I don't remember anybody mentioning that, but from what I see on LinkedIn and other places like that, you know, tons of companies are hiring. I see regular, regular posts of people looking for opportunities uh, or looking for people. Um, so I suggest that you tap into uh, LinkedIn. If you want to contact me, I can connect you to a few people that I know are looking for people right now. Um, so that's uh, how I will answer that question. Uh, all right. Um, here's a question for you, Mike. Uh, somebody said, could you give an example of the hiccups you're referring to with virtual cards? Good question. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, I think uh, the primary one, uh, well, there's sort of there, there would be two, and one's not related to virtual cards, I guess, directly, but it's some do associate it with it. So the first one would be um, hotel um, sort of acceptance and the traveler check-in. Um, and uh, now I'm going to be kind of doing a, a bias and a plug because Grasp and Marriott just released something of work, new workflow that would so solve for that. Um, and so, and there's some, you know, big clients that we have that are really, uh, we're very helpful in, in, in bringing that to life as well. Um, and so there's some things that can be done to help improve that. The other piece of it is uh, on folio, uh, which folio gathering is, uh, you know, very important. 
and uh, that's you know not necessarily related directly to virtual card, but it, it can be. Um, and actually, uh, this is now going to be sort of a plug for Traxo because Traxo solves for that too um, on, on capturing uh, the, the detail of the folio. So if the folio comes in, um, I think the industry is still reliant on the hotels to send it um, for the time being anyway. But if it is sent, Traxo can take that data. Uh, take the folio and put it into real meaningful data um, as well. So that's that's uh, that's uh, the two items that came from that. Any of you guys that have any other feedback, feel free to type in the chat. Um, you know, for any sessions. You know, it's uh, and and this is also an opportunity for you to share things that you wish could have been better about the convention. Like for example, um, I may be pronouncing this wrong, but is, is it Asal? I don't know if, if I'm saying the name right. Forgive me if I butchered that. Um, you're asking about SDGs, and I assume you're talking about sustainable development goals. Um, sustainability was definitely a prominent uh, subject at convention. Uh, however, the feedback that I've received is that um, you know, the, there was a sustainability platform, if you will, platform stage. Pavilion. So, Pavilion. Pavilion. But it was off to the side in the registration area. And I, I feel as though it was it was really busy in that area and a lot of people didn't necessarily pay attention to it. Now it did get brought up quite a few times on the main stage. Um, and I'm sure it was woven throughout and there were a few sessions, you know, um, you know, involving sustainability. Um, I'm not sure I was able to capture any of them myself because I was in some of the other sessions. Um, and if you, if you guys wanna chime in on anything you saw around sustainability, it's definitely a theme that's woven with throughout, but I think one of the pieces of feedback that I got for GBTA for next year's convention is if it's something like sustainability, make it a little more prominent rather than feeling like it's kind of, okay, we've got a pavilion set up, but it's kind of off to the side. Um, now that's not my feedback. That's just the feedback that I've heard, you know, in, in discussions about it. You're just amplifying the feedback. Trying to be the voice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. so um, uh, Mike, you attended Surviving or Thriving in an Omnichannel World, is that correct? That was on the yeah. expo floor? So they had some yeah. sessions actually on the floor itself, which was interesting. Feedback. Yeah, it was uh, it was well attended. I think uh, there was uh, some folks late arriving, um, but, you know, as they started the conversation, it was, uh, it was you know, people, it was filling up um, and it was moderated by Rich Miller, really great job. Uh, you know, he discussed uh, omni-channel and beyond, going beyond the multi-channel, sort of on the buying experience. Um, you know, good discussion on, on the future and, and things to be aware of, particularly around data. Um, but yeah, it was on the expo floor, so I, I, I'm not sure if that. I don't know. I feel mixed on that one. I, I, there, I mean, if you're walking by and saw something of interest and great, but if you're in the, you know, uh, on the expo floor and you're in the session. Some of the passerbys might be also a distraction too from from the session. So um, yeah, and what, what did you guys think of it? I mean, uh, did you go to any of those sessions that were on the expo floor? Yeah, I was I was really interested in the uh, ladders presentation. Um, so I'm uh, an applicant for the next round of ladders, and so I wanted to see the winning presentation. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the ladders program. I'm going to do my best description of it. So if anybody else is with ladders and they want to chime in, raise your hand and, and we can unmute you. Um, but it is an opportunity for a mentee mentor relationship and um, you get put on a team and it's a diverse team. So there's a mix of suppliers and buyers. Competitors are not working on a team together. And then you present on a topic that GBTA provides and you present to a panel of judges that awards the winner. Um, the winner gets to present at GBTA convention. And I was a little bummed because for one, when I knew it was time for the session, I couldn't find where they were speaking. Like the expo floor was the first time I'd been on the expo floor. Um, I'm looking on the app, trying to figure out it was in room. It listed a room, but it was actually on the expo floor. So I had a challenge finding it. And I wasn't there until halfway through the session. Um, and then once I was there, it was like people were walking by. I'm like, hey, hey you know, people waving and and, I, so I wasn't completely focused, although I was trying to be. Um, so yeah, I I think it would have been, and and the feedback that we had on the pre-call on this was like, I kind of feel a little bad for the GBTA people that put this together because it's like, you're not gonna be able to satisfy everybody. Because I think one of the reasons why they put the sessions on the expo floor was to be able to provide more sessions, but yet also have expo time. So trying to provide something for everyone, but 
I don't know as though it worked out so well. I mean, for me personally, I would like for the sessions to be focused on the sessions. Um, but that's that's my own personal feedback. I don't know, Ash, if you want to lend some to that. No, I think um, I think that the future of Expo is to do sessions during the Expo at the Expo. I think that's kind of the trend that I see from many conferences. So um, not surprised that they were doing it that way, and I'm sure they'll continue doing it there too. Uh, so here's a comment from uh, Elise. Um, she says that what stood out to me was that jet fuel comprises only 3% of sustainability issues we face. So um, I, I know that's a fact, so I read that as well. Um, thanks for that input, and that's actually a true statement. So thank you. Yeah, that was, that. Uh, I think that was on one of the slides from um, Joe, the CEO of Joby. Um, yep. So let's move to that. Let's move to that. Um, so uh, before we get to that, I know Justin, you ran for dr uh, director at large. Is that is I'm saying that right? Allied mm -hmm. at large. Sorry. Yep. So um, so uh, give us your feedback. I know you worked really hard on the election. You tried to make it happen. We all supported you as much as we could um, through action and votes, uh, but uh, didn't really work out. So I know there's always uh, next year and the year after. So you will. Uh, you will. I know you'll get there one day. I don't know if I'd fully say it didn't work out. Um, you know, I I appreciated and I was honored for the experience. I truly was uh, honored to be able to be considered. Um, I had a lot of people very kindly coming up and saying I voted for you and I loved your platform statement. Um, listen, it's not easy. I mean, I have a great appreciation for everybody that that stepped up to to run for this position. Um, and you know, I I'm gaining experience as I go. Uh, I anticipate I will run again. You know, when, when another position is open, I love this association. I love this organization. I love the difference it's made in my life personally, as well as the companies that I'm involved with. Um, you know, but the uh, the the one that got it was uh, Kevin Sullivan with um, Southwest, and he's an amazing dude. I mean, he's just uh, he he's been in the industry for I, I think close to 30 years, um, if memory serves right. And he won the election on his birthday too, which is like so fitting. Uh, yeah, so it was. I, I'm very pleased uh, that he's there. I'm going to be pestering him with some ideas and saying, "Hey, now that you're on the board, I, you know, I've got some suggestions." Because my platform statement was, you know, I'm out there. I'm a, I'm a member of six BTA chapters, and I attend a lot of them throughout the country. So I hear feedback, and I'm going to be relaying that to him. So my my goal is still the same. Um, but no, it was an honor to run, I, and, and I was grateful for the opportunity. Great. And I know we're coming up on time, so we're going to make the next minute or two um, me more meaningful here. So uh, on Tuesday, uh, you know, we had the evening session. This was the main stage session again. A uh, whole bunch of different speakers, uh, you know, and I'll just summarize real quickly. And, you know, Justin and Mike, please add if you want to add any more comments. Uh, we had the CEO of Joby Aviation. He talked about uh, the industry change to a vertical uh, takeoff uh, vehicles uh, that land in a common spot. People can shorten their distance to airports and other places like that. Um, and he's been working on this for 10 plus years. Um, and it's all about aerial ride sharing, which was really interesting, right? So we think about Uber ground ride sharing. Uh, what about aerial ride sharing? So he's got a company that's moving in this direction. And it's all not only about the, the speed at which you can move um, through these uh, transport vehicles, but also the ability to do it with no sound and he talks about sound being less than what you hear leaves uh, on a tree on a windy day so that's pretty amazing so that was a big takeaway for me uh and uh and then the role of technology and the return to travel uh you know a bunch of speakers um you know they all talked about what they did at their companies respectively on you know how they brought travel back uh where travel is today uh, i remember beth sullivan from bank of america making a comment about the fact that uh, you know, the banking institutions are all back in the office. So there was a lot of talk about, you know, work from home and that kind of thing. And uh, and so those were pretty big, significant uh, comments being made by all the folks um, on that panel. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah. We'll just congratulate uh, Barbara Rose with Ernst & Young and Sue Spear um, for their uh, election to the direct at large positions. Um, and then we also, there was a, uh, a travel manager of the year named as well during the uh, conference. So congratulations to, um, I, I don't want to get her name wrong, Lisa, Lisa Ham Hamer, is, did I say that right? Visa? Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. So 
congrats to to her as well. Lots of uh, rewards were were given. So you know, I'm, I've opened that door and now. I feel like I'm not uh, adequately, uh, you know, giving out accolades, but um, a lot of hard work in this industry. A lot of good reward there. Totally true. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think overall the the feedback that I've heard is that the speaker in the round style was appreciated. Um, you know, so kudos to GBTA for because people felt more involved and they felt uh, you know closer to the to the main stage speakers. Um, definitely more content. Um, you know, so it's kind of a trade off. You know, do we put some some sessions on the expo floor, but yet there was more content uh, brought. Um, and that was greatly appreciated. And then um, just overall, the the ability to be able to access afterwards and the recordings that's available um, to those of you that signed up for the ability to receive that. If you weren't able to go, but then also on the app for those of us that attended, so you can yeah. see the recordings through the Cvent app um, under GPTA Convention 2022. Yeah. So then the final day, it was a very light day. Um, you know, the expo was still open. Um, it was a lot about closing out uh, conversations, getting uh, last minute meetings done, um, and by noon it was all over. Uh, so, you know, we are super excited about next year already. Uh, this time GBTA is coming to Dallas. That's the hometown of Traxo. Uh, so, you know, that we're going to represent. Hey, Mike, interesting. Grasp, uh, you know, GBTA was at San Diego. That's the home yeah. of Grasp. Um, yeah. I was going to Dallas, hometown of Traxo. So, we might yeah, do this again amazing, next year. Yeah. Right? Let's uh, I'd love to on that though. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like it, but yeah. <laughs> what? Say that again? Say that again? To have, to have it in those locations. Like, it, I know. we didn't have any pull yeah. on it. It's kind of worked out. Yeah. Well, don't. You, <laughs> we made some calls. Don't lie, Justin. You know, you did. <laughs> all right. So, um, so that was the conclusion of the conference. And, you know, we really hope you all enjoyed the session. Final comments from you, Justin, and you, Mike, on the conference this year. Glad you went. Did you, are you glad you went? Was Absolutely. it worth the flight yeah. delays? Was it worth the lost bags? Was it worth the drinking, the fatigue, the tiredness, the exhaustion, and having to come back home and catch up on all those emails? Was it all worth it for you? Yes. Absolutely. That's uh, yeah. unequivocal. I, yes. Yeah, I, I feel like the, I mean, it was probably one of the best GBTAs I've been to. I just feel like the energy is back in the industry. Yes. That, and that's, that means a lot. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So with that, we're going to conclude today's session. Thank you all for joining. Uh, and Peter, any last comments? Uh, we have actually just one leftover question. Um, okay. Well, let's take the question. Noriega, did you get yeah. the sense after these past two years that travel programs are status quo or have actual changes versus just lip service? Great. Go ahead, Mike. You start with you and Justin, you can go next on that question. I I actually don't know on this one. It's a it's a great question. Uh, have they really changed? Um, I, I I'd like to think so, but to to the you know, to be like you know critical on it, I, I don't know if they actually have. I, I don't know the answer. It's a great question. Justin, your comment. So uh, even aside from convention, I've been asking this question of travel managers throughout. Um, and the feedback that I'm hearing is that there are a lot of companies exploring technology offerings. Technology is on the rise for the future of corporate travel in many ways. And a lot of these companies are exploring that and adopting it and liking it. Um, you know, so I see that as a change that's being made. Um, I hear a lot of feedback that the, the strictness, because one of the questions that I asked in, in that uh, to policy or not to policy is making your program stricter, do you think that's sustainable? And the feedback that I'm hearing from a lot of travel managers is that we are creatures of habit. We are getting back to where we were before the pandemic um, in every way. So that is not just getting back out there and traveling, but also compliance too. So yeah. that's where the technology comes in handy um, for these companies that are exploring technology. And of course, I'm gonna say such as Traxo and Grass, but um, other technologies out there as well which I'm sure were displayed. And there were techno specific technology sessions. There was a, a tech, tech safari, um, you know, with all these new presenters, the innovators, um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the names that were mentioned even in the OBT deathmatch. I mean, that is technology. So I, as far as the changes, I would say, yes, they're making changes from a technology standpoint. From a compliance management, I see that uh, the feedback that I've seen, at least personally, um, is that it, they're, everybody's reverting back to what they were doing before. However compliant Shame. they were before the yeah. pandemic, that's where they are yeah. now. 
change is hard. Change is hard. It requires effort. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, hopefully that answered the question. Uh, and uh, once again, thank you all for joining. Really appreciate you all being here. On behalf of Traxo and Grasp, your attendance today was very much appreciated. And uh, if there's anything we can do for you, please reach out to us. We're all on LinkedIn and look forward to seeing you all next time. And till then, we'll see you in Dallas. Be there. Thank you for joining, everyone. Thank you all.